Good evening, everyone. I will call the uh, Air Select Board to order for Wednesday, March 27th, 2024. This is a joint meeting between the Air Select Board and the Finance Committee. Uh, this meeting slash hearing of the Air Select Board and the Air Finance Committee will, will be held in person at the location provided on this notice. Members of the public are welcome to attend this in-person meeting. Please note that while an option for remote attendance and or participation via Zoom is being provided as a courtesy to the public, the meeting slash hearing will not be suspended or terminated if te technological problems interrupt the virtual broadcast unless otherwise required by law. Members of the public with a particular interest in a specific item on this agenda should make plans for in-person versus virtual attendance accordingly. This meeting will be live on Zoom and Channel 8. The public may access the proceedings by joining Zoom meeting ID number 849-4805-4993 or by calling 929-205-6099. For additional information about remote participation, please contact Carly Antonellis, Assistant Town Manager at ATM at Air Period MA Period US 978-772-8220, extension 100 prior to the meeting. Uh, Kurt, I'll offer to have you, the Finance Committee call to order, please. Hi, uh, this is Kurt Freskowski, uh, Chairman of the Finance Committee. Um, uh, call the uh, meeting to order. Second. Thank you. All in favor? Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, so on the agenda for tonight, we have the second FY 2025 uh, public presentation, which will be handled by uh, our town manager, Rob Pomprian, finance manager, Barbara Tierney. Uh, and then we will open up for questions and comments uh, from both the select board and finance committee afterwards, and then for the public afterwards. Robert, I will turn it over to you. Good evening, Mr. Chairman, members of the Select Board, Mr. Chairman, members of the Finance Committee. Uh, good evening. Um, it wouldn't be a public budget presentation without uh, technical difficulties, so I have some good news and some bad news before we kick it off. Um, the bad news is we have some technical difficulties. However, I want to thank uh, the Assistant Town Manager and the Facilities Director for putting together um, a, a temporary hopeful solution uh, for remote uh, participation. We just ask that everybody talk a little bit louder because the microphone for the Zoom is, is over there. So that's the bad news. The other piece of the bad news is that I'm going to work with Carly on the tech solution tonight, so just be patient with us. The good news is our friends at APAC are recording this live, which we appreciate, and it will be recorded, and um, we will show that um, at future dates. And finally, uh, we are actively uh, working to resolve uh, this issue. The final piece we had hoped, the ClearGov platform, the new budget platform, is ready to go. And a special thanks to the town accountant, Carrie Cooper, and the assistant town manager, and the finance manager. Unfortunately, due to our technical solution, we can't, it has nothing to do with the platform, it has to do with projecting it. So respectfully, we're not gonna talk about ClearGov tonight. But the good news is at the April 2nd meeting where both boards will be there, we'll do a brief presentation then, and it will be ready to go live for the public as of April 5th. So we appreciate all of your understanding. We appreciate the public's understanding and patience uh, during this. So we'll get um, right into it. So, So just um, briefly, again, tonight we're going to just give a brief overview of the omnibus um, budget. And in the interest of, of time, um, we could go forever on this. The, this is another piece of good news. We're not going to go forever on this, but we're always available to answer any questions um, for the, the public. So here we are on the budget process and budget calendar. So we're here tonight on Wednesday the 27th for the public information on the budget. Coming up to April quick, uh, quickly, um, the select board and the FinCom will approve the warrant and the, the budget on April 2nd, uh, next Tuesday. And then the warrant will be posted uh, for the public by April 5th, next Friday, and will be posted on the town's website and posted uh, throughout town and then town meeting is on April 22nd. From Tuesday till April 22nd, the town will be doing a lot of outreach on the budget and the town meeting warrant. We'll be having the articles of the day where each day we feature some information. We're gonna have a town meeting page and the budget page together so all of the documents will be linked there 
And if members of the public or members of the boards see something that's missing or have further information, let us know as we want everybody to have all of the information. And we'll also be doing the budget book again this year for town meeting. So we are entering the final stretch and the town of Ayr is financial strength is a true testament to the whole town as I have said before. Um, as you, you just have to look in the news, all of our neighboring towns are facing, mo the majority of them, either budget cuts or shortfalls, or looking at overrides um, just in the Neshoba Valley communities, if not statewide. We are in a strong position uh, through a lot of work of the town uh, with the support of the select board and the FinCom and our town meeting. Um, our certified free cash is just over 1.6 million. This is the seventh year in a row that there's been over a million. Uh, we'll talk about free cash in a moment. Our stabilization fund is at just over 3.5 million, and our capital stabilization fund is just over five, uh, over five million. And just for the public's benefit, both of these funds have to be can only be accessed by a town meeting and a two-thirds uh, vote. So these are, uh, think of the town's reserves. Our last standard and poor bond rating, this is an independent third party our rating agency. We have a double A2 rating, which is the second highest um, that you can, you can get. The rating includes findings of a very strong economy, strong management with good financial policies and practices, and the select board and the FinCom just completed an update of the town's financial policies and healthy reserves. So this is really a third party um, metric, if you will. The history of the omnibus budget increase. So tonight we're talking about the omnibus, which is really the town's budget. We're not going to talk about um, the school assessments as we did in the first um, budget presentation. And at town meeting, uh, both superintendents will be making a brief presentation on their budgets through the town moderator. Uh, so there'll be more information then. The Finance Committee has met with both um, school districts, and I encourage folks to check out those uh, meeting uh, videos and presentations that are posted on the town's website. So the Omnibus Budget Draft 3, which you have as of April 22nd, and from our perspective, is really the, the final budget subject to any um, changes by the Select Board of FinCom, is 18 million nine hundred and fifty nine thousand five hundred five dollars which represents a 5.83 percent increase over last year and you can see this is the history starting um as a base year fiscal year 2015 as a base year you can see the increases the average annual increase of the omnibus has sat at about 4.94 percent so a little bit higher you know than the average but there are some you know, mitigating factors um, affecting that, but pretty much within, it's actually pretty much with consistent um, from last year as far as the increase. So the budget evolution, as we always talk about, the budget is a, a work in progress and uh, we start early. Um, the last year's omnibus budget was just over 17.9 million. Draft one, which was sent to the select board and the FinCom on January 12th, had an increase of a 6.37% increase, or 1.1 million. Then through further work, draft two was sent to the FinCom and the select board on February 16th, with an increase of about 5.26%, or just under a million. And on March 22nd, draft number three of the budget increase of just over a million dollars or 5.83 percent increase and this has all of the um, collective bargaining agreements and all of the this is basically what we're calling the final what were the major budget drivers as discussed this year um, the first is uh, contractual um, union and non-union personnel costs and benefits, and we'll talk about that in a minute. Um, specifically, um, the police contract uh, was up for negotiation this year. That has been completed. 
Um, there will be Article 2 at town meeting will be the authorization of the funding for that. Um, and there'll be a brief presentation. There's about $63,000 impact. Um, the dispatchers were also up this year. Um, that has been concluded with an impact of about $35,793. It's Article 3 at town meeting. Uh, on the recommendation, um, in accordance with the town's financial policies, a 2% COLA uh, was recommended and approved by the select board subject to town meeting approval for all non-union personnel, and that represents a, a $63,987 impact. As we talked about um, in the first budget session, and won't get into detail because we did a lot of talk on that, the IT department their new security requirements and the department remains in transition. As a result of both of those, it was a significant increase um, in the IT budget for this year. Also, what we talked about at length at the first budget presentation of the fire chief and the deputy chief is the further integration of the fire safer grant costs for the firefighter positions into the town's um, budget. Um, so when you look at the fire department budget, um, that's the significant piece of the increase. And then at the first budget forum, Barbara had talked about our debt service um, increase in debt costs. Our debt service is just about, about 1.2 million um, right now. Uh, there's been some increases in um, debt cost, but because of our favorable bond rating, um, we are competitive still in the borrowing, but there's been increased costs there. So those are the major drivers. And of course, like in every household in every city and town, we're still seeing this thing called inflation that's just nagging at everything, that's just pushing it some. Just want to show, again, on the budget, uh, the wage and expense analysis. So. A municipality, if you think about it, is really in the service business. We provide all kinds of services um, for uh, the citizenry. And that, those services are largely provided by personnel. So if you look at our budget, we're largely a personnel um, entity. Um, if you look over here on the expenses, 49.61%, so 50%, let's say, of our expenses are wages alone. And then if you add in benefits, employee benefits is another 26%. So 75% of our expenses is uh, personnel. And a lot of the personnel costs are driven um, whether they're contractually or um, through other standards. And then over here, you have a breakdown of the wages by department. Our uh, public safety department, police and fire, uh, are about 58%, and I think if you look at most comparable municipalities, that's gonna be your, your lion's share there. Public works, 13%, cultured recreation, 6.6%, 6 .6 and general government, which is here, about 18.6%. So again, every year, the, the majority of the increases are driven by personnel costs, for the most part. So again, as I mentioned, I think this is the seventh year in a row we've had over a million dollars in free cash, which is uh, a true testament uh, to the town and everybody's efforts. So there's 1.6, just over 1.6 million in certified free cash. Uh, what is being proposed, and this is subject to town meeting approval, the first one is our GASB 45 OPEB contribution per the town's financial policies each year we've been putting $300,000 towards that. We put the 300,000 towards it, 165,000 of that comes from the local meals and sales tax that the town collects. And therefore, when after you do the calculation, it's really 135,000 uh, from the free cash. So that's been a consistent Warren article, oh God, for probably the last 10 to 12 years or so. The next item we started a few cycles ago is the forward funding of the town's pension assessment. Uh, working with Middlesex Retirement, uh, we learned that if the town um, 
forward funds, we get a, a pension assessment each year. There are considerable savings uh, to the budget as we do that. Um, and we are in a position that we could continue to do that. The, there will be an article, the funding of the opioid special revenue fund. Um, this is the opioid uh, settlements that the town is involved in a nationwide um, consortium on this as these opioid cases are either settled or if they go to court in these judgments, the town of Ayr receives um, a portion of settlement funds. Up until recently, they had to go into the general fund, um, but they can only be used for specific um, purposes. So we are proposing um, the special revenue fund uh, this year, which most communities are doing, and the 7,924 25 represents the funding we've received to date. So the article would transfer it from free cash into the special revenue fund. The special revenue fund can only be accessed for specific opioid related purposes. It can only be accessed with a public vote of the select board. And even after the select board votes, uh, on using the fund, the director of accounts at the Department of Revenue also has to review and approve the expenditure. It's part of the court uh, settlement. And then we're proposing as we continue to put um, in capital stabilization another $650,000 um, in state capital stabilization and another 584730 75 in stabilization fund as we continue to ramp up those reserves and the lion's share has been being put in capital because of larger potential capital costs. But here, I think there's more of an even split this year between uh, the two funds. And again, this is a, a standard warrant article every year that town meeting uh, would authorize that. So next steps in the process. So the warrant actually closes this Friday at noon for any warrant articles. Uh, and it's also the deadline for any citizens petitions to the town clerk. On Tuesday, April 2nd at 6 p.m., the select board will approve the warrant and the FinCom will make their recommendations on any financial articles. As I mentioned on April 5th, we'll publicly post the warrant, which will include on the town's website and at Town Hall, and it will go to print and will be mailed to all air households in advance of town meeting. And then town meeting is on April 22nd at 7 p.m. And I also just wanna mention that the town's election is also on Tuesday, uh, May 14th, here at the Town Hall. Lastly, as I've been trying to continue to promote on the town's website is the FY25 budget webpage, and here, we're populating it with all of the events, documents, um, presentations related to the budget. And after Tuesday, we're going to do a similar thing with the town meeting warrant by article. So all the information is here. Again, if you want hard copies, let us know during normal business hours. Or if there's something that you don't see or something that you would like, we want you to have that. Please contact you know, my office, my email address is, is here as well, or Barbara. Our main goal is we want people to have their questions answered and all of their information uh, to them going into town meeting on April 22nd. So that was sort of a, a, a brief, fast overview, Mr. Chair, but I'm, all of the departments are here tonight as well to answer any questions um, that the select board or the FinCom may have, and then of course the public, and just want to remind folks to just project a little bit for okay. our viewers. Thank you. Thank you, Robert. Um, I'll open up to any questions here up at the table from either Finance Committee or Select Board. None no. here. Okay. I can't yeah. Yeah, I don't have anything myself, so then we'll open it up to um, any public questions. Uh, yeah. Dennis, oh, yeah, please. Go, go ahead, Dennis. Uh, Dennis Carmen, Pleasant Street and Air. Um, my first, which, which departments are in, in the culture and recreation, you know, percentage of the wages and 
benefit, which, which town departments are captured in culture and recreation? So culture and recreation, the question from Mr. Karn, and this is just for the benefit of those listening, the 6.67% culture and recreation. So one of them would be the, the parks department. Library. The library. So parks department, library. I think that's it. I think those are the, the two. Okay. And then the human services, which is the 2.5, is the council on aging, council on aging. aging and the social worker. Oh, I'm sorry, the Council on Aging Library veterans. and um, Veterans. Vet veterans benefits. Yeah. yeah. So, oh, sorry, so. so Parks and Rec Library, and I believe Council on Aging are the 6.67, and I believe the Human Services is this, the new social worker yeah. department. I'm sorry, so in culture and recreation, Carbs, Library, and COA. I yeah. believe so. This yeah. is, I'd have to go look okay. for 100%. Yeah. Right, right. in, in, in human services, you think it's social worker and the veterans. veterans. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, is, it, um, is it possible to get, in, in, on the public safety wages by department, it is, is it possible to get a breakout uh, between fire and police? Um, so fire, which portion of police? So you break this out. Right. Further. Yeah. Okay. Please, please. I can. I can yeah. do it I on the fly. Uh, and again, this would be, you know, you're going to have to, which portion of the wages for fire for fire are attributable to the ambulance enterprise funds and which are attributable to the fire portion of it. You're giving us homework. No, I yeah. don't. And, 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 yeah. you know, obviously, these are long-standing issues sure. of mine that are not. Right. Yeah. This is yeah. not a novel. Right. Yeah. So, um, to, not to speak for Barbara, but we can, we can break this out. We can't obviously on the fly, but we hear what you're saying, break out police and fire, and then show also the ambulance piece and what yeah. happened. Okay. So, yeah. we will... Uh, yep, so for the ambulance, um, when I calculate the indirect costs for the enterprise fund, that is where the fire department wages are taken into consideration. I do have some detailed information. I just, I don't have it right here. Sure, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, we will get to that. Absolutely. Um, and on, and this is, um, I, I, so this, this, this came in to just now. This is kind of, because in, in draft two of the senior center budget, there was a reduction of, I want to say $7,500 and some of the, um, some of the increases were reduced or eliminated. Yeah, so from draft one to draft two, is that what you're referring to? Yeah, yeah. So there were a few decreases. Um, there was a couple items that we realized were paid by Mart and didn't right. need to be in the Council of Aging. That was the majority of the decreases from one to two. Um, and then there was a couple things that I believe she's paying in her formula grant that we decreased right. as well. But I, I believe there was also a request that a modest, for a modest increase, I want to say of some $2,500 to $3,000 to expand programming, um, specifically exercise, the availability of exercise programming at the senior center. And what, and what number is that? Right here. Well, so, but it wasn't being reduced. The, yeah. The yeah. allowable increase was being eliminated. Or okay. Is Katie here? The second to last one. Oh, there it is. Uh, yeah. I mean, we did have multiple uh, increases, yeah. but I have to go. Okay, sir. This is the hot oh, seat. There we go. Oh, <laughs> so, Mr. Yeah. Chair, through you, Katie yeah, Petrosi, the director. Katie. So, the. Um, Address the board, or uh, you can you can address okay, Dennis. Yeah. It's fine. No, so, we, we talked about this. Okay, okay great. Yeah, so the um, there was a, a request for twenty five hundred dollars mm -hmm. more for an exercise instructor, um, and then the as Barbara mentioned, the um, the majority of the reductions were things that were either um, could be covered by March or um, I was awarded that hybrid programming grant, and so there were some requests for IT updates and upgrades that I'm actually, when uh, draft one of the budget went in, uh, was submitted, I didn't know that I had the grant yet. So once I was awarded the grant, um, those were duplicate expenses. But um, Mr. Kern is correct, the, mm -hmm. the $2,500 was, was removed. Okay. Yeah. 
Excellent. Thank you. Thanks, Jay. So, so my request is, a, is to restore the $2,500 budget in order to uh, in order to allow, and again, this is a, in my view, given the overall budget, this is a modest increase in the budget to allow for additional programming for improved exercise for some number of our senior citizens during the week. Um, okay. Um, we can discuss that tonight, right? And make yeah. that decision because we have to approve it next week. Um, right. uh, Janice, I have no problem increasing 25 rents because this is the offset's going to come from um, stabilization. I'm oh, sorry, Mr. Bob. Uh, what is the relationship to the grant money? This $2,500? Uh, that they, they were not related at all. Oh, so the okay. all grant right. that I received from the state was for um, hybrid programming. So it's technology related to allow seniors who aren't comfortable coming into a group setting for whatever reason to experience the on-site programming that we're doing. So um, the fitness instruction wouldn't be eligible okay. under that Got grant. So. I guess I need a little more clarification as to why you decided to pull it out. He's asking for it to come back in and you decided to pull it back out. Yeah. Because you're the department head. So right. you're seeing things different. So if you could just kind of reiterate again why. Um, at the first budget meeting that we had, I think we didn't have the school assessment in yet. Correct. And I think there was some concern about the level that uh, the increase was going to be and so um, the town manager asked each department to look and see if there were things that were that we could pull back out of the budget you know in order to make sure that we um, were being as responsible with our budgets as oh, possible no, no, so no. yeah I, so that was I think that's great you know as far as that goes I just I just wanted to kind of clarify okay. that again thank Good you question. Do you have any objections to adding the 2500 back into the budget? No. No, I don't either. So I'll say by consent, the select board has no issues. Uh, Kurt, if you want to discuss with the finance committee, please feel free. Any, do we have any input uh, from the finance committee? Uh, I think it sounds reasonable. I agree. Fine. Okay, perfect. Um, no, that's fine. So just as a reminder, you can't increase budgets at town meeting, but they can be decreased. So historically, we've tried to put things into the budget because they can always get reduced, but it can never be added in at, at town meeting. Okay. So Mr. Chair, just so we're clear, um, we're going to increase the COA Council on Aging uh, service line by 2,500. Yes, okay. please. Thank you. Thank you, Kate. Thank you. Mr. Carr, anything, any other questions? Um, this is, um, so I've been spending some time on, uh, there's, as people may be aware, the Pioneer Institute, which is not a, a liberal progressive think tank by any stretch of the imagination, has now been able to post to the, to the web town budgets and town budgetary information for all the communities in the state, um, including spending by department, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and you know, clearly it's been an ongoing concern of mine, what I see as a disproportionate increase in fire and ambulance costs to the town of Air, um, and to some extent police costs, and to the detriment of the rest of the town. And, and, and again, I. You know, I, I think if you look at the proportion of the budget spent on various departments, it, it seems clear to me. So just to kind of put things in perspective, and these are 2022 numbers because 2023 and four obviously aren't available yet. But the town of Air in 2022 spent, according to the Pioneer Institute, 7.1% of its budget on fire. And I don't know to what extent that includes the ambulance service. The town of Groton, 3.6%. The town of Shirley, 2.2%. The town of Harvard, 1.5%. The town of Littleton, 4.1%. For police, the town of Dare spent 10%. The town of Groton, 6.1%. Littleton, 4.4%. Shirley, 7.4%. Harvard, 39 
Um, and again, each community needs to make its budgetary choices and budgetary judgments based on what is important to that particular community and what the needs of the community are. It seems clear to me that in terms of the services to the residents of the town, that is the things that they need in terms of recreational opportunities, um, senior services, you know, the whole gamut of things outside of fire and police are less than what they ought to be. And to approach each budget as each department now gets to increase their budget by 3% this year or whatever the, I mean, the perfect example here for tonight is, is what Ms. Petrosi said. That is, coming out of the, the lack of clar clarity about what the school department would be, departments were asked to kind of look at their budgets and consider what may or may not be possible to cut in order to bring them better into line, depending on what the school department. She went through the budget with a fine tooth comb, took out $2,500 based on um, the request, right? I mean, acting in good faith to the overall town budget in the face of the fact that the fire department is looking for a 9.35% increase. You know, I, it's the, um, so, I mean, another way to look at this is- De Dennis, is there a question? Do you have a question? Yeah, so okay. how is, I mean, a couple of things. The first is, in terms of the, the four additional firefighters, which, as a result of the SAFER grant, now being moved to the, towards the operating budget, um, what is the rationale for that? That is, what is it that makes it necessary that AIR have 19 full-time firefighters? Um, and in terms of the police, and I don't know where the dispatch center contract works into this, have we recovered from the town of Shirley the, what I understood to be the $600,000 that they have failed to, or have not yet paid to the town of Air for the regional dispatch service? And where is the new contract in terms of, uh, you know, equalizing expenses on the, uh, on the dispatch service? Okay, um, so for the first question, we'll talk um, on the fire staffing. Uh, we go to Chief Johnston here with us this evening. Chief, please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you. If I might start off just to uh, add to Mr. Curran's comments about the fire department. So just about, probably just shy of 20 years ago, it was brought forward to the, I believe it was Chief Phil at the time, to start ALS service. It's kind of what we brought to the town, and that's what they've supported us over the last 20 years coming up on um, we've had great support from the community in that investment it's worked well to us has saved many lives as for the safer grant part um, this year as you look at our budget it's like around 10 percent i think is what he said if we were to take apart the additional safer funds we would be just under five percent which is probably you know right around that mark this year um, we end up picking up some of those safer grant positions in the middle of february to the end of the year for $118,000. That's an addition to the 106 that we already have in there. So in our operating budget, for clarity, we have, uh, if everything would have passed this year, would have around $224,000 that supports um, the safer positions, which includes four firefighters um, for our staff. And just to clarify that a little bit, you know, as a deputy's done a lot of work on the safer grant stuff, um, we've transitioned back from the, say, 70s and 80s from a call department where there'd be 30 people around town that could come back and take care of the calls to a full-time staff where we don't have as many call department members in town. We're down to about, we have about 12 on-call people, and out of those, we have maybe six that we would clarify as, like, always able to come back. So I think we've transitioned as a full-time department from a call to a, more of a full-time we're still a combination department. Um, hopefully that clarified some of your comments. I'd be happy to answer anything else while I'm up here. Um, so the, 
The five hundred and forty nine thousand dollars in overtime that Dean Gilton says or the five hundred just over five hundred thousand dollars in overtime. Mm -hmm. So in addition to having all those full time firefighters, you also need five hundred thousand dollars in overtime. Yeah, that overtime is broken down. So that covers there's some contractual obligations. We cover vacation time, training, um, and those are the things that fall under that. So yeah, so at the fire department, uh, the four positions we backfill each time somebody's on vacation or a time off. So there's always four 24/7. That would be correct. Uh -huh. But that includes contractual overtime at thirty-five thousand dollars. Any callback time for those members being off duty and there's a call that requires them to come back. Yes. All right. So. For the board and the finance committee, just to put things in perspective, $550,000 in overtime for the fire department. The entire budget for the senior center, salaries, rent, utilities, food, program, all of it, $240,000. So to give you some idea of where that is what, what our values are, I guess, gives you some idea of what we as a community find important. Ms. Copeland. Um, I just have a question, Mr. Curran. You've brought this up several times over the past mm -hmm. few years. Yes. My question is, directly, in your opinion, what is the exact staffing that these departments would, would be acceptable for you to run because I don't know they're giving us right. what they give I get what I give for my department sure but what is it and I think that's what needs to come is your question is continued yep. and it's not being answered to your satisfaction so right. I'm wondering is it six well, firefighters no I, well it, and that certainly is which but is I, but no, that's I why I would suggest because right. these the question is not being asked directly and that I think you need to have something to bring so they well, can fuck me in the middle. I understand, and, and I think I have in the past. I, I, I disagree. Think, okay, so I have, I, I believe, at, at, on the floor at town meeting, right, suggested that a comparative analysis to the other towns of a mm -hmm. similar size, what is their full-time staffing, how do they manage to do with less, I have brought those numbers to the town. The vast, and again, we can we can collectively search for that. I, of the towns in Massachusetts, right, with populations of 10,000 or less, mm -hmm. right, there are very few, if any, that have 19 full-time firefighters. Okay. The vast majority of them have less than 10. Okay. And you would see, I, I saw numbers six, seven, eight, nine. Now there are a few, 16. We're still, so we're just going to keep going so, in circles. No, I just, no, my suggestion is so, right. an actual number. Yeah, That's okay. At this point, so, I mean, it should be an actual all right. number. All right. Let's say, please, everyone. All right, one moment. So, all right, so Dennis, first off, one, on your comment about looking at simple town sizes by populations, you have to look at, at the, the makeup of that, that community. You can't do a direct comparison. Um, when Chief Pedrazzi was, was on board, he would always tell us we are comparable to Hudson, to Clinton, even closer to Lowell than we are to our surrounding communities that we are here. So comparing us to a Shirley, a Harvard, you know, a Groton is not a comparison for our staffing. And, and to Ms. Copeland's point is we're relying on the professionals to tell us what that staffing needs to be for us as a community to be held safe. And based upon those staffing requests that we've gotten for the fire department, we have put forth that to town meeting, and town meeting has approved the budget based upon those requests, which is, you know, my opinion, the budget is a statement of a town's values of what they want to fund. Okay. Um, so there were a couple other hands, sorry about that. Um, Kurt and then Janice, yeah. okay. Kurt, yeah. Okay, yes. Um, hi. Um, Scott Kirk Friskowski, just to um, again, I think it's valuable to let folks know what uh, we do as finance committee and select board and, um, and things. And I just want to mention that um, a little homework that I gave myself was uh, as we've um, the finance committee is. Uh, learning more and more as I've gone on to for a reference um, to the actual 
uh, Massachusetts Division of Revenue sites, which has lots of information. And in fact, um, uh, you can do town comparisons um, as opposed to outside sources. This is the Mass Department of Revenue. Um, in fact, this is one thing uh, we're looking forward with to in the future with ClearGov, where we'll be able to get this information even more um, directly. And speaking um, to that, as very rough homework, um, I'm learning as I go, I actually did a comparison of uh, Air, Groton, Harvard, Littleton, and Shirley. And um, interestingly enough, it sort of reflects what Dennis found on some outside website. Um, but those, those uh, were in line. Um, so, and here's the very interesting fact that I found out, which sort of ties into what you said, where comparing air to our immediate neighbors is a nice thing, but here's the interesting thing, and I think the chief will uh, appreciate this. Um, the population density, so in other words, how many people do we have in town uh, per square mile? We have the highest population density, air, 942, compared to Littleton, 613, Groton, Harvard, Shirley, which are around 300 or so. So my point being is that with a high population density, a well-funded fire and police department are essential because we are really, as you mentioned, comparing we're bordering on an urban density. Am I correct in that? I would agree with you. Yeah. So, any case, to summarize real quickly, I did some very beginning homework looking at the, these things, comparing towns to things. And my immediate after looking at this was, um, we're uh, we're okay. That was again my personal assessment. Again, very rough. Uh, quick homework, um, and I think um, we as a committee will continue to look at these things uh, and be aware of them. Uh, that's our job, and, um, and I think from my history, I think we've done a pretty good, uh, this town has done a pretty good job in keeping these things well reviewed and um, realistic. So, just some information. Thank you. Thank you, Kurt. And Janice? Well, I mean, I'm not going to dismiss his questions. You know, he's got some valid questions, but I do think you use the word values wrong. I think that it's it's a little insulting to say that we don't value seniors in this town because that is incorrect. Um, the fact that we do have a healthy fire department and police station also shows that we value seniors because that means there's somebody to go get you if, God forbid, you need something. Looking at the numbers from a couple of years ago, you also have to ask the question, what was going on? Was there a fire that, need, that the fire department had to address? How long did it take them to put it out? Where did they have to go? I mean, the fire department, for example, knows no boundaries. They get a phone call, we got a fire, we need your truck, they go. Are we gonna stand there and say, no, you can't go because what, we've allotted as much as we can? So. I think that your questions can be valid as far as what are we spending the money on, but I think the way you word it comes across kind of insulting, well, and, it, and it upsets people, okay? So I, I just think that you should know that, but I, I think that this town has always, in my life, I was born in this town, okay, and it has always believed in a strong fire department, and it has always believed in a strong police department. If Harvard doesn't want to have as good of a fire department as we have in this town, that's Harvard's decision. They, 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 at their town meeting, have decided what they want. But our town meeting has historically always said, we believe in the safety and we want it and that's what we're going to pay for. So I'm just going to say that you might want to just maybe reword things a little bit and listen to how it comes across. Mm -hmm. okay. I, I'll give you one answer. I'll give you one more minute on this subject and then I'd like to move on, please. Okay. Thank so, you. So just briefly in terms of feeling safe and needing X number in order for the town. So am I to take from that 
that prior to the federal government providing the SAFER grant that allotted the four additional firefighters, we were an unsafe community. No. That is precisely. No, that is, no. That is no. a gross misstatement that you're making right there. Um, I will say that there were conversations with P Chief Pedrazzi going back, pro I think actually when I was still on Finance Committee, where he knew, you know, because one of the questions we asked on Finance Committee was, where do you see the next five years for your department? And one of the things he talked about was the need to grow staffing because of the density increasing here in town. Um, so to say that we were an unsafe community is just, it's gross negligence for you to say that. And, and to Janice's point, it's just downright insulting to some of the people sitting here at well, this table. I did not say that we were an unsafe community. In fact, I think we are a very safe community. All right. All right. My, I will, point, I will agree to disagree no, because I heard, I, is, Dennis, please, I'm chairing the, the, the meeting, right. please. And the word you use the words as that we were an unsafe community. You asked the question if we were an unsafe community. Yes. And uh, to my opinion, we are not because we have a very strong fire department and police department. Um, Deputy Chief, you had your hand up. Would yes. you like to address that, so, please? Looking historically at our operations and our staffing levels, uh, we can certainly show you the comparison of what our call volume was, as the Chief talked about. If you go back to the 80s and 90s, you had a robust coal department at 30. Those don't exist in the United States anymore. That, that is a failing proposition. The, you know, the volunteers and the ability to put those hours in is, is down. We're down to about 13 personnel, you know, six being active. We have a pretty accurate accounting of what they represent for manpower, for staffing, you know, how many, can we calculate out the FD, you know, we calculate it out to the volume of training they do and the number of calls they respond to. So I can clearly show you that if you like the data over time. And I can show you how it's waned to an extremely low amount, especially over the last five or six years. Um, you know, and then the other part is, is we've always tried to adhere to the best practices of what we're told by the FPA. So when we were doing that with the, the three-person staff, um, we were augmented pretty rapidly with that call department. As that began to wane, that's when we began to go, hey, you know, we need a little safer model. That's how we transitioned to that four-person model. I mean, that's that's not new. That's that data has been something we've been tracking and looking at for years, and you know we can certainly share that. Um, I think we have that one of the meetings early on, either with the finance committee or the meeting. Um, but we have it available if people want to see it. You can you can see how the, the transition has happened from call to so career staff and why. Okay. Thank you, Deputy okay. Chief. Um, we have a question on Zoom. I'm, I'm told. Yep. It's um, Pauline. So if you want to go ahead. Thank you, I'll be very brief. Um, I'm, I'm concerned that we're hearing this again tonight. So I'll say this, I don't believe we've ever been an unsafe department, but we have always been an understaffed department until about four or five years ago when we received the SAFER grant. And I've advocated for adding to the fire department and the police department for years both as a selectman and a finance committee member. So I'm happy to see that this is happening. But the other point that I not heard tonight, and uh, Tim, please correct me if I missed it. There is a situation with both your department and the police department that when somebody's on call or at a fire or an accident or uh, transporting a patient, when it comes to be your shift in, you don't just say, oops, raise my hand, I have to go home now. You stay until the job is finished, no matter how long that takes. And I know it can take a number of hours. So I don't know if I missed that, but please elaborate just a little bit on that for everybody who's maybe listening. Yeah, she would be correct. Mr. Chairman, yeah. she would be correct. I mean, if they take a call 10 minutes before the shift's up, they stay and see the call through. It happened this morning. You know, there are two calls right before shift change, so they stay mm -hmm. similar to probably police departments, and we have to see the calls through. And if I might just end up, too, if we can go back to our safer grant process, if you recall, and the town manager would recall this, I remember Chief Pedrazzi coming forward, and it was a few fires where we were pulling up to the fire, and there were significant fires. It was just one or two people, you know. And to Mr. Curran's point, are we unsafe? No, but the people uh, going to fight the fires were very unsafe, and that was concerning, I think, 
not only mm -hmm. to us. And if I might end, I think we get a, a really, both public safety, we get a real amount, a large amount of support from our seniors. I wouldn't take that away. They're real good supporters of us, you know, both public safety. Excellent. Thank you. Um, I'd like to move on from the fire staffing, if that's okay, Dennis. <laughs> all right, thank you. Um, all right. So your other question, um, oh, sorry, thank you, Chief. Thank you. Um, your other question was regarding the $600,000 for the regional dispatch from Shirley. Robert, I'll turn it over to you yeah. for that question. Yeah. Uh, so, Mr. Chair, uh, as the board is aware, the intermunicipal agreement between the Come on, she, between the town is still under negotiation. Um, it should be um, that we're very close uh, to coming to the select board um, with uh, an agreement uh, for your consideration. So um, it's a coming attraction, and I'm not trying to be elusive in that sense, but I think uh, I know the board in open session will go through the, the, the all of the details. Um, I, I think it is safe to say that progress is be, will be made, I think encouraging progress to achieve the, the, the parity issue, which was the, the concern. Okay. Thank you. Um, Janice? So okay. that's the, the, the 911 emergency that we had that the, we did not call Shirley. I just want to you mm -hmm. know clarify this. Yeah. We did not call Shirley and say, hey, we heard you're having some problems. Why don't you join with us? Right. The state of Massachusetts came knocking on the town of Ayers door and said, Shirley has a problem. We'd like you to help. Mm -hmm. And they're the ones that are also kind of monitoring this and to make sure that the town of Ayers does get their money um, so they kind of help oversee this. Is that correct? Yes. Okay. Excellent. Mm -hmm. Memory selectman Livingston. Okay. Yes. So yeah. because I remember, I remember us going over to yeah. Shirley and them announcing that they were finally starting to pay their fire department uh, personnel. And I was like, are you kidding me? Why haven't you been? Yeah. Um, so it was a very big conversation, but the state of Massachusetts mm -hmm. came to us and asked us to come up with this agreement. Right. And I, I just think, um, in, in Mr. Curran and I have talked about this, and I know that this is you know, a concern of his and others. I think very shortly we'll be coming um, to the select board, uh, the chief and I, to discuss all of this you know, in detail, and um, we'll have that public discussion at, at that point. It's almost um, okay. complete. All right. Thank you, Robert. Mm -hmm. And just yes. I, Please. I don't know how many members of the public are, in fact, here that don't so, uh, I mean, that are in town, of course. Um, the, um, on the opioid settlement, I know that Robert had mm -hmm. taken a look at that. I had asked a question regarding Ayers' portion of the opioid settlement and how it was, it would appear, based on some information, mm -hmm. grossly disproportionate, that is, far less than what you would think it ought to have been, um, given a comparative analysis of what other communities received. So it has been, I know that you were looking into why it is, what formula was used that caused air to receive less than what one might have expected. Robert. So Mr. Chair, and we'll discuss this too at the article um, at the town meeting, oh, but to, okay. to, to, to briefly to answer your question, um, as the board is aware, and I think the public is, the Harvard Press did a story maybe a year ago, and it was revealed that Harvard, as well as many communities, including AIR, are in this national consortium that has taken legal action against the manufacturers of opioids. And as these uh, suits are either settled or if they go to, to trial, in, when in the majority have been settled at this point, there is a whole court-ordered formula in which the portion of the settlement goes to, um, I think it was over 1,600 different um, uh, cities and towns, and then there's the state level and so forth. It is a federal um, settlement. All of it was set by the court. So this question came up, Harvard is receiving a, a larger amount of opioid funds than, say, Air and Shirley and some other places. So it raised the question as to why, because if you look at the various metrics, make a long story short, um, in talking to the, 
Attorney General's office, as well as I know Senator Eldridge was aware of this, but the Attorney General's office in Massachusetts was sort of the point person. Well, interestingly, there was a transition. The Attorney General, and this is what they told me, the Attorney General is now the governor, and some of the folks that worked on that weren't there, and at least 17 calls back and forth with the Attorney General's office. There were various metrics that were used, and the one that they seemed to think and, and, I, and I said this, I think, before, Dennis, and we may not like the, the answer, but this is the answer, is the fact that Harvard is in, one of the criteria they looked at is county impact. And so Ayer is in Middlesex County, obviously, as Shirley. Harvard happens to be in Worcester. And the Attorney General's office felt, and I asked the question, because there's large urban areas in Middlesex County as well, but that the county variable is what tipped it in Harvard's favor. That's the answer that the town has gotten to, to date. Whether that is 100% accurate or not, who knows. Um, but it is set by, by the court, and that was the metric. And, and just so that the public is aware, yeah. it, it wasn't that Harvard got a little bit more, or some of the other surrounding towns, it was like 10 times more. Correct. This was not a trivial kind of difference that um, um, kind of playing gotcha with. No, uh, yeah. correct. So, so just to, so that the public is aware that it wasn't a trivial, trivial amount. Mm -hmm. okay. Agreed. But, all, right. mm -hmm. yeah. all right. Thank you, Robert. Um, <coughs> all right. Any other questions um, regarding the budget for this evening? Anything on Zoom? No. Nope. No. Nope. All right. Thank you, Carly. All right. So that concludes our budget presentation and the Q and A session for this evening. Mm -hmm. Um, I'll invite the Finance Committee to adjourn first. I'd like to make a motion to adjourn. Second. All, all those in favor? Aye. 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 And aye. And and adjourned. Adjourned. aye. I will make a motion for the select board to adjourn. I will second. All those in favor? Aye. And the chair says aye. Thanks, everyone, for your Night, time everybody. tonight. Thanks for coming.